All right, what is going on, everyone? Uh, we're going to try this again with the Dino Deck profile. I changed it up uh, a little bit. I still don't have, and I repeat, do not have any ground Xenos. All right, but if you have ground Xenos in this deck, you put them in and replace the Pot of Prosperity, okay? I am missing still one card in my extra deck. Don't have it. But it is um, Evil Zorlars, the rank 6. You'd play that, okay? But other than that, most the whole deck is like up to date besides the ground Xeno and having a Lars. And I, I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, it's the best variant you could have. Um, except maybe if you instead of playing like, I don't know, Sabersaurus, you could play Frostosaurus or something like that. Um, the extra deck is just about the same, to be honest with you. Um, just a couple of cards are different. Um, but as we're going through this deck profile, I'm going to actually do things a little bit differently than what I normally do. Enjoy the picture of Hogwarts Castle in the background. Um, it's a puzzle my family and I did a while ago. Um, I'm going to tell you when and where you should hit and if certain cards are on the field with other cards, why you, um, when certain cards are on the field and the combination of when you should hit with cards. So we're going to start off with your main culprits, three OV, one misc, two archosaur, three infants, another infant, but a different name. So the, these are your main guys. Um, the the baby you play at three, and I feel like you play petite at one because it's not petite's not as good as baby, and you can still accomplish the same thing. This is just level four lower. This is level four higher. And to be honest, if you if you're going into a combo having to get rid of a baby early to get out ov, you can just search what you need off for this anyway. So it doesn't really matter. That's that's my opinion. Um, if you open if if you open ov. Plus Misk, you're basically good. You discard Misk, your opponent can't do anything. You, that should be your first thing on your turn, right? Um, on second thought, if you have OV on board and you have Lost World, you activate Lost World force first. Normal Summon OV, Chain 2, Chain 1. Your opponent can't Ash you, but your opponent can Imperm you, so be careful of that. And that's where the Misk can come into play. Misk can come into play, make the OV unaffected by Imperm. Yada, yada, yada. Um... If your opponent shifters you, then you're in a lot of trouble. Um, I'm not going to reveal that secret. If you're a good dino player, you should know how to play around shifter. Um, you should know how to play around shifter. And that, that's about it. Amadorn Darkasaur, it falls in the same category as the rest of them. Um, it's just the difference. If you get shiftered, all these cards here at the end, the babies and the petite pteranodon, are unaffect, um, unable to use their effects because they have to be hit the graveyard. Other than that, you're fine. Double Evolution Pill is turned off with Shifter because all your cards are in the graveyard unless you somehow draw a Dino and a non-Dino in your opening hand. Then, you know, you can, you can still do a little bit. You just got to be careful. All right, and these are basically the rest of the Dinos. You play one Rex, one Coatlus. Some decks don't even play Coatlus, but I kind of like it. If you open... Um, well, I'll go with these two UCTs. If you open a UCT and then you have a Double Evolution Pill... Instead of doing two UCTs, you can go UCT Quatless. His Quatless gets you an extra spell on Trap Negate. I kind of like it that more. But we're going to go Xeno Meteoris. I like to set one. I know most decks play it at one. Some decks play it at two, but you can play it at one. And it's actually fine because when you pop a Teat Tyranodon, you get it on board. Use it to pop another baby or whatever to get your Sabersaurus, which is right here. And I like Sabersaurus because it helps you because it's a level 4 Dino, so you can XC into your... Your Lagi or your Dolka. And then it's also level 4, so it's an easy thing for Borlode Savage, or if you're trying to go into Baron with it and Meteoris. You know, that's why I like it. It gives you a little bit more of an option. And then Double-Headed Dino King Rex. It's it's just here. You don't have to play it. It's just here. You could, you could literally substitute this out for a second Meteoris if you want to. I just have it there because it's a good card to just get a card on board. Right off the bat, like... You, if you control the monster, special summon it. Boom. You're triggering... You get that out with the Lost World. You're basically giving your opponent a token. So when you use Ovi... Um, the only thing your opponent can hit it with is Ash. Because you already used the Lost World's effect to put a token on board. And they can't imperm you. Unless you have the Misk. So... There's that. And with this, it actually gives you a little bit more of an availability to play around cards like Shifter. It allows you to put up... You know, um, a little bit of a different board... It's a little sick, so you could you can combine it with cards like Scrap Raptor or whatever. So at least you could put up like a Baron to get in the gate and yada yada yada, which is a little bit better, but this isn't ideal to play through Shifter, to be honest with you. That's just me. I'm telling you. Don't don't use it to play around Shifter. It doesn't really work as well. 
but it is good to get um, a monster out to give your opponent a token. Um, we, like I said, we do have the Scrap Engine. So it's two Scrap Raptor, one Chimera, one Golem. This is, I feel like, best. Some play three. I don't like three Raptor. I feel like it may, I see it way too much. I do have a third Raptor. I just don't play it. Um, I don't like it. Because most of the time, you're going to be summoning the Sunbitch from your deck. If you end up having a, a time where you're going to have to normal summon this card to pop it, then you're, you're generally not going to be in the best situations in general. I mean, you're not going to end on a great board. It really depends on what else you have in your hand. So, you know, I like it at two. You don't see it as much, and you're able to um, summon off a baby to get to do scrap rap, scrap engine things. You know, and you don't hit the scrap raptor. You hit the scrap wyvern, especially if misc is already applied, which it probably is at that time. Hit the scrap wyvern. It doesn't, so you don't get a free summon, and I don't get, so I don't get a free summon, and I don't get another pop. The wyvern is the big card to hit. Um. You're, you if you're if you're if I'm going first and I'm playing dinos and I discard that misc, that nib is kind of pointless. The only time you should really try to nib is before I make Baron, right? If I if I can't make Baron and I'm trying to use Savage, you nib me on activation of Savage's effect to equip the the Link Monster because I'll probably have a different Link Monster on board and Savage unless I have Appaloosa on board, but. Those are the times to hit. You make unless you have like the imperm. You save the imperm for the Appaloosa. You imperm the Appaloosa when it hits the board, right? And then you nib on the Savage's effect, and you clear away my two negates, and you're basically making me have to making me put up a bad board, should I say? But Lithosagman diagram. I was playing against my buddy, just play testing. I activated diagram, full combo, no normal summon, right? So if you if you don't even have misc, right? You can diagram, play through normal summon. Just play, right? If you open Diagram and a baby, you can literally just play through without a normal summon. And do like a full scrap combo. You get nibbed or whatever. And then you just normal summon OV and then go full combo because you have a whole bunch of dinos in your graveyard for using on Misk. But uh, we're going to go hand traps now. We got three Ash, ash Blastums or Ash Ketchums. Um, two Imperm, one Called By. Uh, I guess one of the things you could do technically is you can cut out the... Twin Head of Dino King Rex for third Imperm or whatever. I know decks are cutting the Ash, so you can cut the three Ash and play a third Imperm and probably play something like, I don't know, like DD Crow or something like that. It doesn't really matter. I do I still I still do like Ash. It does stop so much. Going against Branded, if they don't have the Called by or the Cross Out, it does indeed end their turn. Unless they have the extra stuff, then you're kind of struggling. But I do still like Ash. Against Snake Eye Fire King, it's not really that good. I don't have a side deck for this yet. I honestly don't have a side deck built. I don't even have a, I haven't even come up with an idea for a side deck for this deck because it's just not something that's been on the top of my mind. And this is one of those decks I'm trying to make sure I get out to you guys and then I can play it this week and, you know, make sure I can get back to you with results. But three Lost World and your fourth Lost World and Terraforming, one of the MVPs of the deck. You know, the 500 attack decrease does come up. It does hurt you with your end board because not all your cards are dinos, but, but the fact that your opponent puts up a card and all all the monsters nowadays when they're starting off are low level and they lose all that attack. If you stop them enough, then to know that they probably can't beat over your stuff is amazing. But we're going to finish off with the rest of the dino cards. Three Fossil Dig, two Pill. Um, I do like this the most. And to be honest with you, three Fossil Dig is probably the best you can do. And the two Pill... Um, if you play this at three, it's kind of stupid. You shouldn't play it at three. Pill is is good. I've been playing it at one. I played it at one before. I haven't been playing it at one. I played it at one before back way back when. I would draw it and I'd be screwed. So I played it at two so I can draw one. If I draw one, I'm fine. So I can search the second one and be fine for next turn. So that's why you play it at two. You play it at three, you're probably just going to brick on them. If you play it at two, it's like the sweet spot. But then I mentioned the Pot of Prosperity. So you play three Pot of Prosperity. Um... If you don't have Ground Zeno, play Prospy, right? Because the way my extra deck is right now, you can you can afford to play Prosperity. Even if it's not built like my extra deck, you can still play Prosperity, banish three, and you're probably going to get what you want anyway. You know, Ground Zeno's better though, so if you have Ground Zeno, play that instead. All right, so we're going to go Link Monsters. One Link Kribo, one Scrap Wyvern, one IP Mascarena, one Pentastag, one Reperdokus, and one Appaloosa. All right, um, for these, I don't need to explain Link Karibo. This is good. 
Um, if you're just if you're playing Link Cribble though, probably should play Secure Gardena. So this way, if you do get interrupted, you can activate the double evolution pill and banish the Link Cribble. Plus, um, you animate Dark Darkasaur from your graveyard to get something else out, which which is there. Scrap Wyvern is just that's a main combo piece, but it not being a Dino does suck. IP is in here just in case you need to make Appaloosa on your opponent's turn. It is really good. Pentastag is a good OTK piece. Um, if you're going second, you make Pentastag. Summon the UCT underneath it. UCT to pop something, flip them all, and then just piercing damage to your opponent. You're probably going to kill them. Um, Repidocus is in here. And I'm going to be honest with you. I do have a card in here that's replacing Nat Beast because I don't have Nat Beast. I actually got rid of it a long time ago. And now I'm trying to find one. for, you know, I don't want to spend money, so I'm just trying to find one to trade. But you use this to turn your Inner Dark Darkasaur into an Earth. Use Inner Dark Darkasaur plus Scrap Raptor to make Nat Beast. So you have infinite spell negates. So cards like Quatlus doesn't really matter at that point. But Quatlus is still good. If you draw it, you can recycle five dinos. Yada, 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 yada. Right, and then Apo is just Apo. Apo is amazingly good. Alright, and then we're going to go on to the XCs. One Dolka, one Log. Yeah, those are your main ones that you make with Dino cards. One Redoer. I actually like Redoer in this deck. I do get rid of it a few times with Pot of Prosperity, but I do like Redoer. It's really good, in my opinion, against Snake Eyes because you can rip a Flamberge out of, off the top of their deck or whatever and keep it on the card. You can hit Key Hand Traps. You can hit Sinful Spoils cards. And then it gets a, it gets more effects the more cards you have on it, like spells, traps, and monsters. So it is good. Um, Tornado Dragon, it is an okay card. It's not really as good as it used to be. Um, it's basically in here for lab, but if you're not really playing against lab or any deck that's going to set much back row, it is a good target for using it for your Pot of Prosperity. And then Guska, and I did mention something about playing about Shifter, and if you guys are paying attention to my hints, this is one of the cards to help you. All right, so... It's about it. Gooska is also too much, too good to pass. If you just get interrupted in general and you have two four, two level four dinos on board, you make Gooska and it's still really good, right? And then of course, if you punch off the imperm, there's nothing you can do there. You just accept your, you accept your defeat at that point. But you know, still Gooska is way too good. Ancient Fairy Dragon is in here replacing Nat Beast, right? I just use this as a pot of prosperity target as well to banish. But Savage and Baron are the other two. Um, so it's, like I said, Savage is an activating effect to equip if you negate it or you hit it with Nib, it doesn't equip and it will send it to the graveyard so it doesn't get a negate off. But if I have Baron on board, yeah, no, I'm still going to, I'm just going to pop that, use that negate. Unless you give me a reason to use my Baron negate, you're, you're swinging. And then we got tokens, but tokens don't really matter. But that, that's about it. Um, the cards that you want to hit are Ovi. And then I forgot to mention if you if since banishing Ash from Graveyard, it banishes for cost and Misk only um, cares about the cards that are on field, right? To be unaffected, you can still Ash the Misk in Graveyard, which is going to be a big hindrance. There's no Animal Darn Darkester. You already use your normal summon. You can't really pop anything unless you're using Ovi with a token on board. You know sometimes that Misk getting Ashed is just painful. It hurts. But I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm trying to get back into it some more. See you later.